Hey guys, today we're going to talk with Christian, a maker from New Jersey. Uh, he's a customer and bought some maker pipe. He found us when he was looking to refurbish a stand for his 1930s musical instrument. Super interesting project and we get into that. But when his girlfriend hurt her leg, he used those parts to make some crutches. It's unbelievable, a total MacGyver moment. Uh, let's talk to him and find out the full story. Hey there, can you hear me? Hey Christian, yeah, I can hear you, I can see you. How are you? I am great, how are you doing? I'm, I'm doing fantastic. Uh, thanks, thanks so much for jumping on a, a call with me. I really appreciate it. Yeah, right on. Fun times. Yeah, I, you know, there's um, there's builds that come by that we are made aware of that are just so cool and inspiring that uh, I got to reach out. And your build, although very simple. Um, was was one of those, and the story behind it, I'm just dying to know, <laughs> um, because I know it's unique. So um, what you did was um, you made crutches uh, for your friend, and I'm going to mm -hmm. just bring that on the screen really quick. You um, posted that on your Instagram, and I'm so glad you mentioned us, your Instagram, CK Vibes. Yep. And then you made crutches for your friend here. And uh, I'm just dying to know the story. Please tell me, tell me about it. Okay, so I'm going to step back a little bit and say that I found Maker Pipe while I was looking for a solution for another problem that I had. So. Um, I have this musical instrument and uh, it's from the, the 1930s and the frame of it doesn't exist anymore. And I had reached out to some um, frame builders to see what they could you know, do for it. And they quoted me at around like $1,200. And this is uh, basically just some pipes. So I said to myself, I, I can probably build this. And I started looking online for resources and I came across uh, the Maker Pipe website and I was blown away and floored and thought to myself, oh my God, I can do so much with this. I'm going to change my life with, <laughs> uh, with, with Maker Pipe. And I had started some stuff. Uh, I have some pictures that I can share with you. I can share my screen and show you some stuff that, uh, that I've been working on. Oh yeah, that'd but, be um, great, please do. But then one day, uh, coincidentally on my birthday, I come downstairs from my home office where I'm working, you know, doing, you know, nerdy computer stuff. And my girlfriend is sitting there and she's like, I hurt my foot. I hurt my ankle. Um, it's, it's pretty bad. And I said, oh my God, what are we going to do? Um, it's the pandemic. We don't really want to go out, you know, like she's a nurse. So she could, you know, gauge that it wasn't broken and that it just needed some time to heal. And I said, I'm going to make you crutches. And she was like, yeah, great. Of course you are. Great. Yeah, I'll just sit here and wait while you make me crutches. And I went down into the basement and I just eyeballed it and came up with the idea. And just on the fly, 15 minutes later, I was upstairs with some crutches covered with uh, pool foam uh, for the, the arm area. Mm -hmm. And she was floored and couldn't believe it. And I said, this is, this is ridiculous and amazing. And they worked wonderfully. Um, so yeah, that, that's the story of those crutches, like Tiny Tim styles, what I was thinking in my head. But right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, how first off, how is your friend your your girlfriend doing? Oh, she's fine. Yeah. Um she healed up and she's walking around and um it seemed very bad that first day, but she happened to have an air cast. And uh yeah, a couple of days later she was just hopping around with one and then, you know, gradually moved on to human power. <laughs> right. And, and I think what has attracted me so much is the fact that you were just able, you had the connectors lying around, right? And oh, yeah. you had this need to do something totally different than what mm -hmm. you planned. And you were able to come up with it in the basement while she was there needing crutches. Because I've been there too. <laughs> I've come home from the hospital after breaking something. I'm like, 
you know, now I got to go buy crutches and it, you know, it, it's costly. I'm going to stick them in a closet after I'm done with them. And it just sucks as a purchase. So what you did was uh, such a great solution. Yeah. Well, thank you. It, uh, she seemed happy with it too. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. It worked out good for her. Yeah. Yeah. There were uh, like some fun and unique things, I guess, about this build. So um, obviously the, the bottom part is the, um, not a part that you sell, but it's, it's a part that I was recommended to on the website as these are great endings for feet for these. Because these rubber feet down here, the, the rubber feet exactly. Mm -hmm. um, I don't remember if I saw them on the YouTube page or if I or if I saw them in the forum somewhere, but I said, okay, I should get those for the stand that I'm building. So I had those. The uh, pool noodle at the top, um, I had to figure out a way to get it on there without splitting it in half. So you can't really tell from that photo, but there's just a hole in the bottom where. Uh, I inserted the horizontal piece in and then attached the clamp through a hole in the bottom. So you can't pull that off the top. You can't pull it off the bottom. It's just completely enclosed in there. And ah, the nice. T-frame is what's holding it on there. And then, oh, actually not in this picture, but if you look at the handle part where the, the T-frame is about halfway down, mm -hmm. um, I felt that that was going to be cold and uncomfortable. So after this picture, I had some surgical tubing that I put over the top of that just to make it a little more grippy and a little bit more, um, you know, hand friendly. So oh, wow. Yeah, another use for surgical tubing. That's, that's neat. Yeah, so I bought the surgical. OK, so let me see if I can share my screen. Sure. And. Wait, did I do it? I don't think I did it. <laughs> I don't see it yet. Let me make sure. Post okay. disabled participant screen sharing. Okay. Not intentional. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay, I think you have permission to share. Go ahead. Okay, so desktop two. Share, and then. Okay, I'm seeing it. Okay, so if I click, those are the crutches. So see this here. Um, this is something that I built, pretty pretty standard, nothing too crazy here. But it came from a need of having this uh, shoe organizer over a door that we filled up with dog supplies. And then uh, we needed more. <laughs> we didn't have enough space for the dog supplies. So I was like, okay, well, let me try and mimic that. Uh, over here, and I did, and then I'm, you know, slowly adding more bits onto it because it's for dog toys. Here's up here is um, a leash hanger, and then I'm going to put some angled ones on the bottom for for uh, boots and put like a, a rubber mat on the bottom. Nice. But the reason I had the surgical tubing was because the bottom of this, these are hardwood floors, and I didn't really want the uh, the metal to scratch them. So I bought surgical tubing to put underneath this, um, like split loom tubing, like to cut it in half and kind of place underneath. And then uh, in the end, I ended up not using it just because I didn't like the way that it looked, but I have it now for other projects. But yeah, this, uh, I think that she's been very impressed and satisfied with my, uh, I guess maybe minor obsession with makeup pipe stuff for a little bit. But, yeah, uh, that's fantastic. That's a, a bonus build. I you only have one door, right? So if you need more stuff to hang, <laughs> right? Yeah, and uh, I managed to measure it and match it up perfectly, and it all uh, it all worked out really well. That's and, great. How did you prevent the floor from scratching if you didn't use the surgical tube? Um, I just kind of put it in one place and have it. Uh, it's not mounted to the wall, but it's. I guess maybe poorly built in such a way that it's uh, weighted to not move. Okay. Yeah. So, that's, a, that's a neat idea though, using the surgical tube. I, 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 I haven't seen that before. That's a neat hack. Oh yeah. I have, I have some other things to maybe show you today too. So yeah. um, let me show you just some of the other stuff. Cause I've got a couple of pictures here. Yeah. Just a close up on it. Um, 
this to the right here is a keyboard stand that I spent around $400 on. And I had to have it like imported from like Germany or something because they don't make them here. And here is my start of a build to recreate this using solely maker pipe. Um, oh, neat. So what's missing here, I wanna put another brace or two across the bottom just to give it stability because the, uh, the T's tend to slide a, slide a bit, mm -hmm. um, especially if I'm putting, you know, thousands of dollars worth of equipment on this. <laughs> I don't want it to, you know, do a split too middle. Right. And then here is what's going to be the keyboard arm. I don't know if I can increase this. Yeah, it kind of gets a little bit. So on this, it's a, I guess the 180 connector with mm -hmm. a smaller pipe in the back and a smaller pipe in the front that will act as the, the keyboard stand. And I'm imagining putting um, like five or six of these on here so I can get a bunch of less wide keyboards on here and have it be a, a companion piece to the more expensive one for uh, considerably less than $100 uh, in cost. Right. Yeah, so, that, that's neat. What what type of music? All types of music? Or tell us about oh, your yeah. music background. So. Uh, went to college for drums, um, found myself playing jazz, specifically mallet instruments, but there's not a whole lot of call for uh, mallet instruments in the, the real world. And uh, there is a lot of call for keyboardists. So through keyboards, I found myself doing uh, synthesizer type things because I'm not, I'm not good enough to be like a, a concert pianist or a Billy Joel or an Elton John. But I am I am good enough to you know be like the guy from the cars, uh, or something like that. So you know rock and roll stuff. And I've been in a bunch of bands and kind of found that the older style synthesizers suited my nature more. And now I split my time between um, playing drums and playing keyboards and playing the mallet instruments. And also uh, I've recently uh, ventured out onto a solo electronic music project. So it's just me just playing modular synthesizers, lots of um, wires and stuff that I move around and try to make stuff happen in a like an organic electronic way. It's wow. Uh, it's different. It's weird. And you know, I'm, I tend to like that kind of stuff. In fact, if you were looking at my Instagram, the first the newest picture is of me uh, performing that <laughs> recording oh. it uh, haphazardly. <laughs> awesome. Okay, cool. Well, I'll definitely check that out. That's that's neat. And so thanks, thanks for sharing. The last thing I wanted to do, and I wanted to kind of pick your brain a little bit on this. So this is a picture of one of the musical instruments that I play. This is a fully assembled one. Mine doesn't have these legs. Okay, so, is that, that that's the instrument you were talking about in the beginning that the, the whole project? Yes, okay. exactly. The, the need for this type of leg system is what inspired me to get into maker pipe. Mm -hmm. So here are the challenges that I've encountered so far. These legs currently fold. I, I don't care about folding. Um, I'm willing to take them off, but I haven't been able to find a good uh, wall mount flange type system yet. Um, my understanding is that this is probably a pretty common need for 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 builders, and I haven't really seen anything on the forums or anything that uh that really suited my needs. Are are you aware of anything? It it has been a something that builders really need, and mm. uh, we get that request. We get it a lot, and um, of course we're working on something on the side. But I think the community has come up with some some good solutions that that might work out for you. Um, there was a post on the community about a, um, it was a curtain rod hanger on Amazon. Yep. Um, did you happen to see that? I did. I purchased it. And then I realized why that wouldn't work for my particular needs. Okay. Um, wow. You, you, so you went down that rabbit hole. Yes. I've since changed the approach. So let me get out of presenting somehow. How do I do that? Um, hang on. Nope. 
No, it's not that. Where's my Zoom app? I might be able to kick you off. Yeah, if you could, that 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 would be appreciated. Sure. Yeah, let me do that, and then I'll stop sharing, and hopefully, okay, there you are. Oh yeah. Okay. Good. So instead of the the pipe connecting to the the bottom of the frame like this, I decided to have it connect like this, to have mm -hmm. it flat against it, yeah. and to uh, facilitate that. I found these rubber clamps because it is music and because it's music, you don't want there to be extraneous noises. You don't want metal parts to be piping, hitting up against each other and rattling. Uh -huh. And I also wanted to avoid a screw, which I don't want to carry around a screwdriver and a wing nut, you know, could come loose or whatever. So I don't know how well you'll be able to see this. Oh yeah. Which wow. is just a rubber clamp which I'm gonna to, going to connect it to this little piece of conduit, which I have prepared here. And it latches in. Oh, wow. And sits in there pretty snug. Yeah, that's so, fantastic. That thing is so cool. It's designed for mounting like brooms and stuff on a wall. Right, okay. And for me, the benefit is A, rubber, so it's not gonna make noise, and B, easy on, easy off. So, yeah. you know, I show up to the gig, I have four little rubber silicon type things that I can stretch out, and then I'm good to go. But I think my two biggest challenges right now are um, hinges, because the, the device in question has a pedal, and I can drill it out and put hinges on it, but then I need to figure out a way to flatten the pipe without having an anvil. Mm hmm. Yeah, so. I, I think I, I've got something for you to take a look at with hinges that come to mind. Would you mind throwing the instrument back up so we can talk to that? And that sure. piece looks fantastic. And I think a lot of people uh, would find uses for that. So if you wouldn't mind sharing um, just a link afterwards, we'll kind of turn people on to that and give a link. Yeah, definitely. Okay, so so you're talking about the this pedal here. This here, right? Because I can't see your uh, cursor anymore, but you can see mine. Right. So this right here, um, mm -hmm. I guess has to hinge up and down, which then um, pulls this bar, which then you know allows these bars to resonate freely. Right. So. This right here, kind of like a T-clamp that would swivel up and down is what I'm looking for. I got gotcha. you. Okay. Um, let, me, let me share, because uh, this was something that I was really interested in, too, for a couple projects. And um, we did a video on it. And let me just go to the YouTube, because it'll be way easier. Oh, we don't need to hear that anymore. Yeah. Who's that good looking guy? <laughs> I've heard that plenty. <laughs> Too many times. Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. So I saw this and I wasn't incredibly um, satisfied with this. And, and the reason I didn't like it was just where the, the bearings kind of sit and how um, the ends seemed kind of not well fabricated. Mm -hmm. So I did consider this. I also felt that this might make noise and squeak, which wouldn't be uh, ideal for you know an acoustic instrument. Mm -hmm. But okay. I, I love this idea. And uh, I think this would probably work if I didn't need it to be quiet. Yeah, I, I didn't, you know, I didn't think about that, but this rotated really freely when I, and I put this together and, and did a test here. Um, mm -hmm. one, one thing that might isolate the sound was uh, just the fact that the end plugs were plastic and the only, there wasn't any metal to metal contact. It was only 
uh, plastic to plastic or plastic to metal contact. So, right, uh, and the the plastic end caps are drilled out to have the 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 truss rod um, through them, right? Yeah, you you got it. Um, hmm. What what could be done other than that? As far as a hinge, because so what I was thinking, okay, was since the crossbar is going to be stationary, I was going to take the U bar and uh, flatten the ends of it. Um, you know, I'm imagining myself like with a with a, a hammer and a a forge somewhere. Um, yeah, I don't really have that, <laughs> but you that's the idea. If I was just a flat, hard surface driveway or something, might work. Really, I've been nervous to try that because I didn't want to shatter my driveway, but yeah, <laughs> yeah. Okay, okay. And um, then just use like a commercial door hinge or something, something uh, like a hinge about this big that I would drill into the the pipe mm-hmm. and drill into the flattened end and just allow it to, to hinge um, like a door, like a fence or something like that. But uh... Right, because we, we've had people who have removed, have used the T-connector as a hinge. And the way they do that is they remove the, the plastic band, which okay. gives it a little bit more space around the pipe. And mm-hmm. it allows them to, to clamp down. And sometimes they'll put a little bit of grease in between the connector and the horizontal bar. But I think in your case, because it's you know an active part of the instrument that because mm-hmm. uh, there still is a little bit of drag when you do that. It's great for like, right. you know, doors on a, on a, you know, shed or something like that. Sure. But it, it wouldn't work in your case. Well, if I come up with something and I get it to work, I'll share it. <laughs> well, I appreciate that you, the two examples that I thought of, you've actually already gone down that road and thought through them. So thanks for checking out all of our, all of our stuff. I wish I had yeah. a better solution for you. I think the piano hinge, you know, sounds like a, a, a good idea if you can mount it correctly. I'm going to give it a shot. And nice. then the last thing um, on that same picture, and I'm just going to share one more time, and I think I know how to get out of it now, is this right here. So this cross piece, um, for sake of travel, needs to be easily removable from this cross piece. Mm-hmm. So my goal here is to drill down, um, have a bolt go all the way down, um, locking bolt, and then have flattened ends on either side of this bar, which attach to either the bottom or the top, I haven't decided yet, but then have a, um, a hand uh, screw that will uh, go in there. So. Mm-hmm. I think I've got that part figured out and just need to do the drilling, but I wanted to wait until I got the hinge part working first. But I think once I get this done, it's going to be a lightweight restoration of a device from the 30s. And uh, I'm super excited about this. Yeah, I, I can see where, you know, the appeal was with Maker Pipe and, and that frame. You know, it looks like a lot of the things I've I've built or seen people build. So mm-hmm. um, I'm excited to see this. Um, what? Tell me about the instrument. What? What is this? So it's called a vibraphone. Um, it's a cousin of a xylophone or a marimba. And if you look at the bars here, I don't know how familiar you are with the piano, but pianos have black keys and white keys. Sure. The ones on the top would be the same as the black keys. The ones uh, closer to the performer would be the equivalent of the white keys. Um, it's primarily oh. used in jazz, but uh, also in a lot of like sci-fi type, um, spy type movies. It's got it's got a distinctive sound. It's 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 nice sounding. It's pretty. Um, yeah, it's played with mallets. Nice. <laughs> Basically, it, I went to college for it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's that's fantastic. Who who's it made by? Just in case there's another person that's wanting to do the same thing as you. Well, modern companies that make them would include companies like Yamaha or um, I, I guess Pearl makes them now. There's specific companies that make them. Uh, so one of the companies is called Mallet Tech. But the one that I have is from a company called Deegan, 
which went out of business in, I think, 1978. But they were one of the first ones, and the instrument that I have is, is vintage, and I, I've dated it as well as I could to 1937. So, wow. yeah, nobody, nobody's making parts for it. <laughs> yeah. That's, yeah, that's almost it's coming up on 100 years old. That's fantastic. Yeah, it's, it's insane to think that something from uh, that long ago was still like a viable musical instrument. Although I guess when you think about like violins and stuff from like the 1700s, but um, oh yeah, that's a thing. Yeah. That is a thing. Yeah, the the master violin makers from yesteryear, the wood has aged in such a way that these instruments are worth like millions of dollars now, and uh, yeah, it blows my mind. Wow, that's fantastic. How how did you come across it? In college, it was one of the instruments that we had to study. I went to college for classical percussion, and this was on the list of things. And I found that I had not only an affinity for the instrument, but also an appreciation of the sound that it makes. Uh, mm -hmm. I remember hearing someone else play, like, you know, you're in college, everybody's always doing stuff all the time. I heard someone practicing a piece, and I thought to myself, wow, that's a really interesting and different sound that I've heard before, but never associated with anything. So, um, yeah, I want to do that. And then, you know, I did. Then you tracked it down. Did, was it hard to track down and, and get this particular one? I've owned a couple of these. Um, this particular one I found on Craigslist and I'm looking to make something very portable and gig friendly. Ideally, I'll be carting around on my bicycle Although that's uh these things can be pretty heavy, so that might be <laughs> that might not be an attainable goal, but I think it's a phone to strive for. Yeah, that's neat. And there's always the the bicycle cart route. You know, you could do a whole custom way to transport oh, yeah. this too. Mm hmm Yeah, some of the the builds that I've seen. Um the what was I impressed with very recently? A, the kayak build that was posted, I think, yesterday. Mm-hmm. Um on the YouTube channel, just that was just a couple of triangles with the, the axle to two wheels. Right. Um, that was so impressive. I was like, yeah, that's exactly what a, yeah, what I'm looking for. Stuff like that. Yeah. I think that might have been Nancy. I, I could be wrong on the name, but it was very simple, but also effective. And the way she did that through axle with the wheels. Yeah I, yeah, I like that one too. She did a good job. Definitely. Well, hats off to you for, uh, I thought we were talking about just the uh, crutches, but we got into all your builds, which look fantastic. So uh, congratulations on uh, all the creativity here. I think the crutches for me was just such a, an awesome demonstration that you could reuse the connectors and, you know, it fit your need at the time. And uh, I, I love seeing the, the other things that you made and are going to make. So Definitely check back in with us when you finish that the stand for the instrument. Yeah, my goal is to to actually share and post on the forum because I like the forum. I like scrolling through it and reading. I just uh, don't feel like anything's really. Well, I guess maybe the the dog thing is probably finished enough, but everything else is still. You know, I'm still working on. So I'll get there and I'll share. And uh, are you still looking at my screen? You are, right? Yeah, so I can. I I can see. Oh, okay, great. I, I can send you this link for these clamps. And uh, yeah, they're just amazing. Yeah, I think people are going to find a lot of uses for that. So, and um, yeah, I can't wait to see your posts. And, you know, don't sell yourself short because what you've made already is absolutely something people will be into. So um, I, I appreciate it, Christian. Thanks so much. All right, right on. Thank you so much for taking the time. And uh, I, I really do love the product. So thank you for that as well. Yeah, we, we appreciate it. Thanks, Christian. And I, thanks for sharing your uh, your builds with us. Right on, man. I'll talk to you soon. Or All right. Whatever. Night. See you around. Okay, bye. bye. Thanks, everybody, for watching. It was awesome talking with Christian and seeing all about his builds. Really cool stuff. If you want to share your build, we'd love to see it and tell your story. Get in contact with us by clicking the link in the description down below. We'll see you next time. Bye.